for a, a greater year. Amen? And our theme scripture for the year is Job 8, 7. Though thy uh, beginnings were small, thy latter days will be greater. And we talked about how, you know, your life can be greater. You're, you're, you, can, you can have uh, better, greater in your finances, in your health. Amen? Uh, greater in this church, greater in your life. So the bottom line is, things are going to get better. Your future is bright. Amen? We got Pastor Mike and Deborah here from Center of Hope, uh, who, you know, we just have this kindred spirit of reaching people for the kingdom of God. Amen? And, uh, the, you know, they are looking at a theme of this year of the extraordinary, right? I think it's parallel with the greater, amen? Yes. So there's something going on in the kingdom of God, amen? So I think there's confirmation there when you have other men and women of God that are recognizing that something greater is going to be happening. See, that's confirmation right there, yes. amen? Because they're not saying that this year is going to be the year of the lesser, right? Because <laughs> you're going to look at each of us and say, well, who is wrong and who is right? But this is the year of the greater, the year of the extraordinary. Amen? Oh, think about that. Now, I know some of you are a little, you know, uh, hesitant saying, well, pastor, you don't know my situation. Maybe I don't know your situation, but God does. And are you saying that our God is not on the throne? Are you saying that our God uh, is, you know, uh, a liar? Because if you read his word, you know, I will show you where it says these things. Our God is not a man that he should lie, amen? And he's telling us that things will get better, amen? So if you think that you're going through something today that is, you know, really difficult, and I'm not trying to downplay it, but I want to show you something this morning. If you think things are bad, they can be worse. Think about it. You could be going through what you're going through today, and what if you weren't in the good old U.S. of A.? What if you were in the middle of war-torn Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, right? What, what if you were over there going through what you're going through? See, be thankful for the little things. Thank God that you are here in America. You're, you know, you're a, a, an American. So as bad as it's been getting out there in the world, you are here in a place that still is okay. Amen? Amen. So I want to just share with you some things from the Word of God to, you know, to add to what we've been talking about in this year of the greater. Amen. Let's go to the second book of Kings. This is Old Testament. And we're going to go to chapter number um, 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. And let me share something with you before we get into the Word of God. What's going on here is you have a, another kingdom uh, that is surrounding, right, the city. See, when, when two, uh, you know, uh, when two kingdoms come against each other and they're warring, normally what they do is they, they try to cut off the supply line. It happens in, in war all the time. If you can cut off the supply line, you can make a dent in, you know, in what you're trying to accomplish in your battle plan. Because think about it. If, if the people aren't getting food, if they're not getting supplies, if they're not getting, you know, uh, ammunition, this kind of thing, uh, they cannot continue on the fight. So what's happening here is, is basically the city's been surrounded. But I want to kind of just lay uh, a foundation for you. And so as the city, you know, has been surrounded and they cut off the supply, uh, you know, from the city, let me show you how bad it gets. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we dedicate this time to you. We thank you and we praise you, Father, for your word that doesn't return void. And, and Lord, we just give you glory and honor this morning as you speak to us through your word and give us a fresh revelation, Lord. And we just thank you and praise you in the precious name of Jesus. And everyone says, Amen. 2 Kings chapter 6, let's go to verse number 24. And it happened after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. Verse 25. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and indeed they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver. 
and one-fourth of a cab of dove droppings for five shekels of silver. How would you like to go down to your local grocery store and all they got are donkey's heads and dove droppings? But yet, you're not going to pay a few bucks. You're going to probably pay all the money you got to get these items. Donkey's heads and dove droppings. Think about it. That's how bad it got in the land. And so the reason I share this with you is because I want to show you how bad things got. And now we're going to look at a case study here of a, in some individuals to see how they reacted to these things. And we're going to learn something. Let's go over to chapter 7. And we're going to start here in verse number 3. Second Kings 7.3. Now there were four leprous men in the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? You see that? Why are we sitting here until we die? So you've got four lepers. They're at the gate, and they're just sitting there waiting to die. Now, why are they outside the gate of the city and not in the city? Well, think about it. We just read in the Word of God that they were lepers. You need to understand, somebody back in these uh, times who had uh, a leprosy, basically you were an outcast and you were banished. So you basically weren't allowed to uh, be you know, around everybody. You were considered unclean, so you were kept away. So therefore, they were outside the city gates. And there they are outside the city gates just sitting there waiting to die. Now I share this with you this morning because I want you to look at them in the sense of as a reflection in your own life, as a mirror if you will. Are you just sitting there living your life from day to day waiting to die? See what are you doing with the talents and abilities that God has given you? See you know the story we shared out of the Gospels about the, the talents Right? God gave uh, three uh, men different amounts of talents. And each of the three men, it was a parable that was taught that they all did something different. Two of them actually went and multiplied the talents they were given. But one of the gentlemen went and he hid it. He did nothing with it. So, what are you doing with the talents God has given you? Now, once again, if you give me an answer of, well, Pastor, I'm working on my doctoral thesis. That's impressive. Or you might say, well, you know, Pastor, uh, I'm working on my million-dollar business. Or, um, you know, I'm working on an idea, you know, to, to do something great for the planet. Now, the thing is this. If what you are doing has nothing to do with the God-given plan that God has given you for your life, it is meaningless even if it has to do with making lots of money, if what you're doing is not part of God's plan for your life, it means nothing. So that's what I'm trying to share with you this morning. What are you doing in regards to God's plan for your life? You know, the unfortunate thing is there's people out there that still haven't even identified what God's plan is for their life. So you, first of all, you've got to identify what the plan of God is for your life. And then you could start to try to accomplish it. You could start to prepare for it. But you first have to identify. Now, I gave you a little uh, tidbit, or I, I let you in on a little secret a few weeks ago about God's plan for your life. I told everyone, I said, let me let you in on something for everyone. It has something to do with other people. That's part of the plan for everybody's God-given plan for their life. It has to do with other people. So that's what you need to start thinking about. Amen? Or you can be like the four lepers, be sitting there at the gate waiting to die. Now, you may not be physically sitting at home waiting to die because you go to work every day, because you go play bingo on Friday nights, and because you go to the show on Saturdays, and you come here on Sunday mornings. The bottom line is this. What are you doing with the talent that God has given you? How many people have you led to the Lord this year? Pastor, that's not my job. That's your job. Let's sit down and look at the Bible, and I'll show you that it's your job. See, 
Jesus told the disciples to take the gospel to every tribe, tongue, and nation. In other words, we're supposed to be reaching others for the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I came to serve and not be served. Amen? So the bottom line is this. We are to be sharing the love of God with others. Now, I'm not saying that you need to go on a street corner with a Bible and preach the gospel. But you can. Thank you. But you can. But what I am saying is you can do something. See, the message never changes, but the method can. So in other words, you can be reaching people for the kingdom of God with acts of kindness. Amen? Go and cut somebody's grass. Go work on their car. Bake them a cake. Help them clean their house. Take them to lunch. Amen? Do something. That is doing something for others. Amen? There's a whole laundry list of things that can be done. Right? So the thing is this, is that we need to look in the mirror and say, am I just sitting here waiting to die? Or am I going to do something? Amen? Is it time to start thinking about, well, maybe God does have a plan for me. Amen? And let me stop using my own logic like Pastor Trish was talking about earlier. We don't want to stay where we are at. Amen? We don't want our church to stay where it is at. Let's go to uh, the book of Proverbs 29, 18. We will come back to 2 Kings a little bit later, but we're going to the book of Proverbs. Just keep going to your right there. And we're going to chapter 29, verse number 18. Now, I know you're, everyone may have a different version. This is out of the King James Version of the Bible. I like this version out of the King James. It says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Amen? So where there's no vision, the people perish. So in other words, do you have vision? Oh, what is vision, pastor? Well, vision is the ability to see beyond where you're presently at. Do you have vision? Can you see beyond where you're presently at? Or are your circumstances and situations stopping you from seeing a better future. Can I get an amen? amen? Vision. The ability to see beyond where we are presently at. You know, I, I've shared this story with, with, uh, with you guys a few years ago, and I don't know if you remember it. And I, I love this story because it really hammers home uh, a, a good example of vision. Everyone know who Walt Disney is? He's done great things. He, he's, his, his company is still making money for him, and he's not even here. He's been dead for years. So Walt Disney had a vision, and now that vision is a reality for you and I over in Anaheim, California. It's called Disneyland. It's called Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Disneyland Tokyo. Disneyland Paris. Right? So on opening day of Disneyland, Anaheim, California, Walt Disney died before opening day. And there they were having the ribbon-cutting ceremony, having this great celebration, opening day. We know that any type of uh, uh, event dealing with opening day, there's always some big to-do, right? Now we're talking Disneyland, opening day. Walt Disney died before it opened, but his wife was still alive, and she was there at opening day. And there was a gentleman talking about, you know, how great this Disneyland reality was. And it was too bad that Walt wasn't there to see it. And then Walt Disney's wife gets up, and she gives her speech, and she said the man and corrected him. I need to correct this man here. Walt Disney did see it. It's you that are now first seeing it. You get that? See, Walt had a vision. He had, you know, an idea to see something, and he put it into place. He already had seen it before it came into existence. So he already had seen Walt, uh, Disneyland. It was the people there at opening day that were just seeing it for the first time. Vision. Amen? Amen. The ability to see beyond where you're presently at. See, many people have 
stopped dreaming. And it's just so unfortunate because God is the dream giver, amen? God is the one who gives us dreams. See, we let little things in our life hold us back. We let the words of other people hold us back. We, many of us have stopped dreaming. See, but when you start to spend time with the Father, when you start to spend time in the Word of God, you'll start dreaming again. Because, see, the Word of God will start to water your spirit. And the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. See, your faith will grow as you hear the Word of God. Amen? Faith. What does Hebrews 11.1 1 say? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith. That's the biblical definition of faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Being able to see, right? Being able to see beyond, right? The physical. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Being able to see it by faith. Just because the natural eye doesn't see it don't mean you can't see it. So many of us walk around life trying to look through these two eyes and not your spiritual eyes. And that's why you have to build your spirit man up in the things of God. Amen? So that you can start seeing all those great things that God has for us. Vision. This is going to be a greater year. This is going to be a greater year. Now the thing is this. Only if you're willing to do something. See, now, if you take the approach of just sitting there like the four lepers waiting to die, that, your, your life is not going to be greater. See, you got to do something. Amen? You can't just sit there and expect something to happen. Right? We've all heard one of the definitions of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Right? That's a lot of people out there that are doing the same thing over and over and expecting something different to happen. It's not going to happen. You have to be doing something different. Let's go back to 2 Kings chapter 7. And we're going to go here to uh, verse number 4. We're going to read a few verses here. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse number 4. Going back to the four lepers. Verse 4. If we say we will enter the city, the famines in the city... And we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. See, now they're, they're talking about doing something, right? See, now they're not just sitting there. Now they're saying, hey, what, what could it hurt us to go and try and do something, Right? We would rather go and die at least trying or, or die failing than just sitting there and doing nothing. So don't be afraid to fail. See, a lot of times we, you know, hold back from doing things because we're afraid of failing. Oh, well, failure is not something that, will, uh, uh, that should stop you from continuing on. All it is is just a temporary setback. See, you've got to continue to be able to move forward. You've got to continue to get back up again. Do you think that if you would have quit uh, trying to learn how to ride a bike, that, uh, you know, you, or let me back up. Every time you fell off the bike when you were learning to ride it, right, if you would have just stopped before you learned how to ride it, right, you, you would never have learned. But what happened? You kept getting back on the bike, right? And as a kid, we didn't realize that what we were doing at the time, learning how to ride a bike, was such a huge thing we could look back on and say, yeah, get back on the bike, right? Don't stop until you get it. See, in life, so many of us may fail, right, at different things in our life, and that's okay. You get back up again, and you get on the bike, amen? So don't let failure hold you back. So at least here, the four lepers now, they're talking. They got, they're actually saying, hey, oh, if the Syrians keep us alive, then, you know, we're okay, because they, they got food there. That was verse number four, right? But if they, if they kill us, hey, we're only going to die. But just sitting here outside the gate, we can die also. Verse number 5. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. 
What about that? Look at verse 6. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. You see that? Therefore they arose and fled at twilight, left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. You see that right there? The Syrian army was spooked and left. Now that was a God thing right there. Because they thought they heard more men or more soldiers than what they had. So they got spooked and they left their campsite. That was a God thing right there. Amen? See, what you need to understand is that you're never going to experience the, the supernatural. You're never going to experience the miraculous if you don't try to do something. If you just sit there and go about your day, every day, day to day, the same old, same old, you're never going to experience the greater. See, it's when you start to do something that you know in your own ability you can't do. See, you've got to start to dream and reach for things that are impossible so that God can now get in there and you could start to see the impossible. Amen? You could start to see the miraculous, the supernatural. And so start to think about doing things that are beyond your own ability. Amen? Try. Because see, when God gets involved in the mix, anything is possible. Amen? Anything is possible. So here they are. They left. They went to the Syrian encampment. Now it's abandoned. Right? It's abandoned. And I showed you in Proverbs 29, 18, where, where there is no vision, the people perish. Perish, rather. So they came up with a plan, and they had an idea. Let's go and surrender to the, to the Syrians. And if they kill us, hey, we die. But we'll die here at the gate. But if they don't and we live, hey, you know, this is a 50-50 thing. So they did something. Right? See, so as I mentioned earlier, the lesson from the lepers is to try. Right? To try. Failure is better than doing nothing. Amen? Amen. Failure is, doing, is better than doing nothing. See, we've got to start believing. Let's go to Mark chapter 9. New Testament, Mark chapter 9. And let me remind you what the Word of God says. So we're going to verse number 23, Mark 9, 23. And look at what the Word of God says. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Somebody needs to write that down and get that in their spirit. Amen? Verse 23, Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. I think that should be enough encouragement right there, right there for everyone to say, man, anything's possible. Maybe I can do something great. Yes, you can, amen? It's possible. So don't bury your talents. Do something, amen? Don't just sit there. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. New Testament, right after Colossians. And we're going to go here to verse number 19, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. Oh, I'm sorry, I think I gave you the wrong scripture. Give me a second here. There, there isn't a verse 19. Let me see here. Yeah. I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. Okay, just go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 19. And the Word of God says right here, it says, For what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? For you are our glory and joy. You see that right there? Let me, let me point out something to you. It's talking about a crown right there, right? What is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Who gets crowns? Who, who gets crowns in life? Winners get the crown, amen? The, the person who wins gets the crown. 
So you need to understand that you who are in Christ Jesus, you get the crown. Amen? You get the crown. Now, that's a whole other message about the different types of crowns. I've shared with you before. There's five of them. But there's a crown called the soul winner's crown for winning souls for the kingdom of God. Amen? But right here it says, for what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Amen? At his coming. See, that's what we're all waiting for, but as we're waiting for him, we're doing something. We've got to have a plan. So, and, and once you have a plan, what is the steps to accomplish that plan? I was talking to a few people this week, and I, and I was asking them, what are your goals for this year? You know, uh, and I got different answers back from different people about their goals. One person in particular told me they had, a, they had the, a three, three different things they wanted to accomplish in 2017 in regards to goals. But my question to them after that was, what is your plan of action to accomplish those goals? And the response was, well, I haven't thought about that. So you've got to have a plan of action. Come up with the plan, that's great, but you've got to have a plan of action. Now, let me share something with you. I've been talking about the year of the greater, amen? And what I want you to see, first and foremost, is God's plan for your life, amen? I want you to see what is it that God has planned for you. And see, as you go to, are willing and obedient to accomplish that plan, right, other things start to become more clear to you. Sure, you may have other desires, you know, in your, in your life to do different things. I don't know what you want to do. Maybe you want to hike to the top of Mount Baldy. I don't know. But it's okay to have other passions. But just remember, first and foremost should be about doing what it is God has called you to do. Amen? It's okay to want to do other things, but just remember, keep in perspective or, or be balanced about things that... God's plan is first and foremost. See, oftentimes we get ahead of ourselves and we put our plan in front of God's plan. And then we find ourselves in a situation, we find ourselves in a rut, and we get to a place in life and we say, is this all life has to offer, right? And we start to feel down and we get depressed, right? And, you know, we're just not in a good place. But one thing you can be assured is that when you're following God's plan for your life, you will never get depressed. You will never get down. You will never doubt. Because why? Because you are right on course for what the Creator created you to do. Amen? And so that is why you have to be willing and obedient to follow God's plan for your life because when you're following His plan, everything is going to be going forward. Sure, you may face some opposition, because there is an enemy out there, amen? But see, God is with you every step of the way, and you cannot fail, amen? So the thing is this, get on God's plan, and then those other things will be more clear to you and also come to light. See, it's, it's weird how that works, but that's the way it is. got to be functioning and operating in the God-given plan for your life, and then everything else in your life will start to get in order. Amen? But you got to get that first thing in order. And see, too, often to, uh, uh, too many times we get ahead of ourselves. See, let me give you a picture. It's no different than you heard the term putting the, the donkey or the cart be, be in front of the donkey. Amen? We all know that if you had a cart and a donkey, the donkey would be pulling the cart, right? The donkey's in front of the cart. Well, in life, we do the opposite. We put the cart in front of the donkey. See, that's what our life is like. That's a picture I'm trying to paint for you when we try to do things, right, that don't have to do with God's given plan for our life. It's like having the cart in front of the donkey, right? We're, we're backwards here. And that's why we need to rearrange some things and we need to, you know, change some things so that we can get things correct. Amen? And if you want to see the year of the greater in your life, you have to start you know, being willing to do something, just like these four lepers did. And if we go back to Second Kings here in verse number 9, I believe, look at what it says. So here they are, verse 8, in Second Kings 7, 8. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent, they ate and they drank. And they carried from it silver and gold and clothing. And they went and hid and then came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. In other words, 
they came upon all kinds of goodies. Amen? They went into the Syrian camp, and it was just like being a kid in a candy store. Like, oh my. Right? Every tent was just full of great things that they needed. So the bottom line is, you don't know what's lying ahead of you, but it is good. Amen? It's from God. You have something great in store for you, but you've got to be willing to go and do something. Amen? And so here in this church, we always are offering people the opportunity to do something. There's all kinds of things that need to be done here in this church. And so you can start there. Amen? Amen. See, serving is, a, is an honor and a privilege, but a blessing at the same time. See, because our Lord Jesus showed us when he went to the disciples and he said, I'm going to wash your feet. Why did he wash their feet? Well, he went to wash their feet because he wanted to show them that although he was their leader, he was willing to do basically the dirty work. And washing somebody's feet, I think, could be considered that, right? The dirty work. So he got down and he washed their feet. And he wanted to show them that basically there was, there was no job too little for him. See, it's unfortunate that in some churches that the pastor gets a big ego, maybe because, you know, there's a lot of people there, or, you know, he's got a, you know, uh, his own parking space, or whatever the case may be. And the bottom line is, you know, so he gets to a place and he says, well, I don't do that. I'm the pastor. That's not my job. So Jesus showed us that there's no job too small for him he was willing to get down there and do it see that's the great example of servant leadership see leading by example amen servant leadership because he said i came to serve and not be served so he sets the model for us of serving others doing for others and that's the model that you and i are to follow today amen and see and when you start to realize that and understand that you're on to something that is going to help you in your road to discovery of the great plan for your life. Amen? Getting in there and doing something. Because we are going to do some great things this year. Amen? Let me uh, wind down this uh, morning. Let's go to chapter, or excuse me, Psalm 115. We're going to the book of Psalms, and we're going to be closing with this scripture right here. 115. And we're going to go to verse number 11. So Psalm 115, we're going here to verse number 11. And we're going to read a few verses here. Look at what the Word of God says. It says, You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of of Israel, he will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. Amen. Amen. See, the Lord will bless those who fear him. We've already established that that fear is not to be afraid, but a reverence for him. Those who have a reverence for him, who care about what he thinks and want to honor him, the Lord will bless you. Amen. Think about that. And just like it says, he will also bless, where are we at here? In verse 12, the house of Israel. See, if you follow politics closely, the United Nations has voted it for a resolution to stop the nation of Israel from, um, you know, doing more building, and they want to create a, you know, the, the Palestinian state. And they want to try to divide some stuff there. And we know that that land is the promised land. We know from the book of Genesis, I believe, it's the land of Canaan, the land flowing with milk and honey. That land was given to them by God, amen. And nobody can take that land from them, not even the, the you know, United Nations, which represents many nations from the world. It's an organization where nations come together to kind of work on global things so it doesn't matter what they vote for we know what the word of god says amen the bible tells us that you know that many uh nations from uh, around that region are going to come against them and they will not prevail amen because the house of the lord or hand, excuse me the hand of the lord is on them 
And that's why we got to continue to pray for Israel. Amen. We got to pray for our leaders to support Israel because that's what the Word of God says. Regardless of your politics, pray for Israel. Because the Word of God says that a friend of Israel is a friend of God. An enemy of Israel is an enemy of God. Amen? We want to pray for Israel. That was a little soundbite for Israel. Amen? <laughs> Shalom for Israel. Yes. So as we're closing this morning, the Lord will bless all who fear Him. Let's be about the Father's business. Amen? Let's, let's start to think, you know, and say, you know what? I've been doing it my way for so long. Now it's time to start doing it his way. Amen? And when I start to do it his way, I'm going to get different results. I'm going to have the year of the greater. Amen? See, God's got a plan for you. Amen? God's got something great in store. Don't just sit there and wait for something to happen. Right? Now, it's okay to have plans outside, you know, of the church, outside of God's will for your life, but don't let those plans be the priority. God's plan should be the priority. Amen? Amen. God's plan. And don't be afraid to submit to the plan of God because for all you know, you know, it's not, oftentimes we, we, we sometimes, you know, when we're thinking about God's plan for our life and we, we're, we're kind of holding back on surrendering to it, we're thinking, oh, he's going to send me to Africa. Yeah, I know it. And they don't have running toilets and hot water. And uh, I don't want to go to Africa, right? So you need to understand that you need to be willing to do whatever he's asking you to do. For all you know, you know, whatever it is he's asking, asking you to, there's going to be fulfillment in that. Amen? So don't close the door and say, you know what, God? I surrender to your will. Whatever it is you want me to do, I will do it. Because we've heard, uh, uh, you know, Peter and Donna who are missionaries to Kenya and they come and they give us reports of what's going on over there. And, you know, we keep in contact with them for those who, who get his, his, uh, his, I think he does a weekly or a monthly email. He even sends us messages on Facebook. But the bottom line is he tells us, you know, his electricity may go out from time to time, right? Uh, they may experience some things, some setbacks from time to time. But they're seeing the move of God. Amen? And it's just so awesome to hear that. That no matter what, come, what, what obstacles they got to climb, they see the hand of God. Amen? Amen. And that's what we got to start thinking about. You know, stop, stop trying to analyze everything and just say, I will trust the Lord. Like Psalms tells us right here, right, in, in 11, verse 11. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Amen? See, God's got a plan for you. This is the year of the greater, but you have to be willing to do something. You can't just sit there at the gate. You've got to be willing to say, you know what, let me try something. Amen? If I can ask everyone to just stand as we get ready to close this morning. God is good. Amen?